Hello and welcome to this watercolour painting demonstration of a street scene on a damp day. I'm Tim Wilmot and this is a recording of a live demo to my Patreon members recently as one of our monthly projects. Each month we paint a different subject in watercolour, street scenes, landscapes, seascapes and some quite challenging subjects as well. Through this demo, I'll give you complete commentary and it will cover the whole painting process from start to finish. Starting with what I think is a key part, deciding what to paint and your composition plans. What is Patreon, you may ask? Well, think of it like a club. My Patreon is a community of watercolour painters from all over the world, literally all over the world and all different levels of ability from beginners to professional artists. And their membership, uh, their membership subscriptions help me cover the costs of creating these YouTube watercolour videos. On Patreon, the location is patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. There are different membership levels or tiers. There's a lot going on to keep you busy with your painting, whether it's a hobby or your profession. Exclusive posts by me an image sharing library, a community posting so you can share your paintings, regular online meetups via Zoom, ad-free videos from me released early, painting critiques from me, and exclusive live demos. Plus we do a few interviews, a few focus interviews on fellow watercolour painters. So please check it out if you're interested in getting involved and being part of this watercolour community. So back to this subject. It's Bath in the UK in the winter months and two big challenges with this painting. First of all, simplification. If you've ever been to Bath, all of that complicated Regency architecture to contend with and a busy street scene. And then secondly, trying to capture the feeling of a damp day. And third, oh, maybe third, all those figures in a street scene, do you shy away from including figures in a street scene, well, maybe this one's for you. You join me as I'm introducing the subject to my members. Objective. This is um, a quite a busy street scene, and it's going to be an exercise, I think, in simplifying the scene, and also painting in overcast conditions. We don't have really bright sunlight. I think this was taken, this photo was taken during the UK winter and we've got the light I believe coming from behind us which again is another tricky lighting um, direction for painting. Might be, might be great for a photo and this is a superb photo but when we're looking for maximum contrast light and dark together, um, a range of values, well, darks, dark darks, light lights. Um, this can present a challenge for those two reasons, dark, fairly dull light and the light behind us. However, we do have some light on this middle building here. All of these buildings, this is the typical color of the buildings in Bath, this sort of Bath stone, which you find all over this area, the Cotswolds, um, in this location and um, that, that sort of warmish colour and over time either through pollution or the environment it gets that either sort of staining on it as well so we can see the buildings some of, the, some of these buildings have been cleaned um, quite often when you go to Bath the pressure washers are out the industrial pressure washers are out giving the um, giving the uh, buildings a bit of a, a clean down and um, they get their get their glow back again but that building on the left you can see here a bit of staining on that one all right so simplifying the scene thinking about the lighting also the other challenge here are loads of figures how are you with painting lots of figures in a street scene i know some people particularly beginners they sort of shy away from putting figures into a street scene. And the danger is that um, the scene looks rather bare and um, as if 
Armageddon has has uh, pounced on us and um, there's just devoid of any life. So it's good to get figures in there. It can be they can be focal points. They add a bit more interest. They add some scale to the picture as well. We can see the heights of the figures, the length of the figures. It gives us some kind of context to the scene. So it's always a good idea to get figures in. No cars on this one. This used to be um, a fairly busy road going up there. Um, this is fairly central Bath, all right? And behind us is the main shopping area of Bath. Going up this little street here, this is the Theatre Royal in Bath, um, quite a well-known theatre. And there's a street going up this way, which leads us to Queen Square, and eventually onto the Royal Crescent, which um, I'm sure most of you would have heard of or have seen pictures of that. There's a road running sort of right angles to us here that disappears. So there's a gap between this building with the steeple and these background buildings. This is a fairly short street called Upper, I think it's called Upper Borough Walls, going that way. And so, yes, it's all, all pedestrianised now. A bit of a damp day. We've got, um, I mean, that's, that's going to be another, another sort of watercolour technique that um, we can use here. How to get the feeling of a damp surface. So it stopped raining. We've got this damp surface. We can see, you can just about see in the photo, a reflection of the colour of the buildings. Um, here, these sort of streaks, particularly noticeable there. Um, this guy's red jacket, we can see a little bit of a, a redness in the pavement. And then this right hand one, again, reflections. Soft reflections of the figures, although there are near the, near the feet, we, we get um, a bit of a darker reflection with a harder edge to it, but quite soft reflections. Now you might think this this foreground here is about a third of the overall picture. It's pretty boring, but actually the the closer you look, we've got those reflections. We've got these two lines as well, um, which will help us lead the viewer into the scene. A little bit of a curve there as well, which is quite nice. The road sort of does curve around here. And then these this sort of block paving has got little lines. We can just see a few little lines, the edges of these blocks, drainage cover there as well. Buildings-wise, this is sort of, um, what do you call it? Is it Renaissance? I'm, I'm not an architecture person, but there's this sort of Renaissance architecture, Georgian architecture, um, with these uh, these uh, ornate um, buildings, the the sort of uh, sloping rooftops, the dormer windows, these ornate chimneys as well, and um, the windows, all these panes, the horizontal uh, cornice here as well, and columns, and these triangular um, portico thingies, a um, few little sort of tops to that rooftop, this steeple. Lots of architectural details. We want to simplify that. We're not, I'm, my approach to this, I'm not going to be illustrating this scene. I'm not an architect. I'm not doing an architect's drawing. I want to have a little bit of fun creating the impression of a bar scene, the colour of the buildings, the light hitting those buildings, the time of year, winter, not too bright, um, figures as well milling around different types of figures and just get the impression of the scene. Right, so um, that's our challenge, Bath, how to simplify the scene. Let me describe my materials. As per usual, I'm using Saunders Waterford cold press paper, 300 grams. It's 15 inches by 11 inches. The paints I'm using are from Jackman's Art Materials. In the UK, they're handmade, uh, professional grade 
paints I've got. Well, I've described the, the colours as I go through, but I've got neutral tint, burnt amber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, spring green, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, uh, cobalt blue, ultraing blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, and uh, oh, Tim Tim says Regency. Yeah, you could, yeah, you could be right, Tim. Actually, um, Regency architecture. Uh, cadmium red, light red, cadmium orange. <laughs> that that used to be a cadmium yellow. Uh, I think on my last painting, I must have been trying to make a green through it with it. Um, there's a lavender there, um, and quinacridone gold, and then I've got a, a couple of gouaches here. A Naples light, a, a, a light Naples yellow, Naples light yellow, something like that, and then a white gouache. Right, brushes. I'm going to be using a mop brush with a good point. Um, then a, maybe a couple of medium sized synthetic round brushes, and maybe a couple of smaller ones, a rigger brush for doing fine lines. Well, start with the drawing. Let me just check and see if there's any questions. I don't think there's any questions. No. All right. Just to recap then, I think Tim's photo is actually pretty good from a composition point of view. There's not much that needs to be changed as regards the, the horizon there. Um, or the placement of these buildings. I discussed in Pat, Pat chat our monthly uh, or one of our monthly online get togethers via zoom i discussed whether i would miss out this building on the right hand side um, i think there's a there's a bit of a burger wars going on here but there's there's five guys here and just here is uh, schwartz brothers which I'm, i think is a uk a uk uh chain small chain of um, burger places so uh, i think this building is theirs but uh, just wondering whether to um, include that that sort of side side building there. I may include it. There is a bit of perspective here. You can see the angle of that one there, that bit of moulding there, that angle, and then as we come down to the horizon, we we're going more to the horizontal. So that's pretty much anything on that line is going to be horizontal and our, our vanishing point is somewhere over here this building is going to be fairly easy to do and um, the this is the theatre royal here there's the entrance just in there there are some things I'm going to remove I'm not going to bother with this Moretti red umbrella there's a bit of a kiosk going on there I will I think I'll include these parasols these light parasols on the left too many parasols over here and this the, all this five guy stuff um, a bike stand here uh, a, a road sign that almost is invisible this lamp is quite nice i think i'll include that a bit of a nod to the era of these buildings um, so i'll include that one and also with the buildings apart from their shape and the rooftops and these dormer windows um, and that steeple, try and make sure that this is quite light here, which will give us a bit of contrast with these darker people, okay? Oh, there are a few little um, A-board signs around. Um, maybe we'll have a few of those in there just to, as a sort of geometric shape, just to put that in the mix there. Break up that um, break up that lower that lower third there. Right, where to start? I will start with the steeple because the danger is, I very I quite often start drawing left to right, being right-handed. But if I did that, you can bet that I just won't have enough space for that steeple. Um, quite often. Uh, if I don't plan it too well, I get to a church or a tall building and it sort of disappears off the off the uh, the top of the paper. So I don't want I don't want that to happen. Um, so I'll start with um, I'll start with that steeple. And it's going to be around about. Around about here. 
Now you don't need to place these things exactly where they are, but just get them relating to each other. So we've got the structure below the steeple. Not too much detail at this stage. Just get in the main shapes, the edges of these objects. The upper borough walls, this street running uh, right angles to us. So we've got, and it's going up at that quite a shallow angle. Something like that. Uh, the building on the right is slightly lower than the one on the left because this one's got a higher rooftop. And then this whole road, I think, is called Saw Close. Bit of an odd, I'm not sure if it's all one word or uh, two words, Saw Close, but it sort of curves around. We've got this road going up to, going up to Queen Square. Now, not too much detail in there. We'll just basically the roof line and then we'll put in the Theatre Royal and the building to the left of it. So that frame, that's framing the left-hand side. I'll not bother with that dormer window here. It's too much fussy detail on that left-hand side. So just this roof going off to the left. Get that angle right as well. We've got the, the this sort of cornice. Uh, oh, that's, that's the roof. That's the cornice, and then longer windows here. All right, coming further down. Entrance to Theatre Royal. Now that I think I've got the main objects right, I can start to add in a bit more detail, like these chimneys. Be good to get the street level in, which is around about it's around about there. Now this building in the middle has got the upper floor, there's the first floor. And then we can just see actually the, the street level is going to be around about there. And almost horizontal as well. 
although we're not going to see it because of all these people. But just a, an indication with my pencil line where that's going to be. There's, on the left hand side, there's a screen surrounding a, an open um, cafe. And then these parasols coming out. Back to the left hand side. You almost can't see where the, the the gap is between the background buildings and the buildings on the right, but it is sort of about just sort of about there. That's that's the uh, gap between the two. Now, very complicated buildings on the right hand side next to the tower. There's a sort of slopey curve, it almost looks like a curved roof. And then some ornate chimneys on that one. Will I have enough space to get in that? Just, just in enough space. It does look as if it's curving in with the photo, but I think that's the lens of the photo where you get that kind of effect of the, the angle, but I'm gonna keep mine fairly, fairly vertical. Keep it simple with the drawing. The more detail you put in, the tighter you're going to be. Um, obviously, if you want to do a tight drawing, very uh, accurate, then you, you're going to spend more time um, with with the with the drawing. And this road, there's a bit of a slope to it. Not too much, but just a little bit of a gentle slope as we're going up to. Anyone that's been to Bath, you know it's very hilly and it's sort of uh, fairly flat in the middle. But then the further you go away from the middle, because it's there's lots of, um, it's built on or built around extinct volcanoes. So it's that kind of very hilly area. All right, that's the uh, buildings. I think they are about right. Oh, there's these two little, little bits of um, detail on the rooftop there. Uh, let's just Just indicate where some of these windows will be. So there's three there. That's white. That's darker. I've actually made that a little bit narrower than it is. I think you'll be all right. And then people. Now, when we see a lot of people together like this, it might be one approach might be just to think of them all as one object. Don't think of individual figures. Try 
it's more noticeable um, where they're denser and maybe in the, in the distance you can't really see the edges of, of figures. You can just see the outline, particularly the heads, heads and shoulders against that lighter background, a little bit with the legs. But if you squint your eyes, the, the legs almost disappear into a similar value to the road. Um, and it's it's winter. Most most people have got darker clothing, uh, apart from maybe a few brighter uh, brighter um, clothing like the red there. But on the whole, they're they're quite dark. By all means, have the the red figure in. Sometimes with figures, I prefer just to make them up. And of course, with these figures, we can. We can place them in the scene just to give a little bit of a balance to it. Uh, now, the important thing with figures is to get the tops. We are, although we're on a slight rise here, generally the tops of the figures, they're all in alignment, roughly like that. But of course, they're, depending on how close they are to us, their, their figures will be longer. So... Think about where the height, where the tops of the figures will be, and just draw in. I've done this a few times before, things like this, so. Uh, I, I sort of know what I'm doing, I think. Let's have a, a few more figures over on the right-hand side. We're a little bit bare on the right-hand side. Um, so now a few figures. We'll make them a bit bigger. Let's have a larger. We've got sort of three or four larger figures here. Yeah, let's go with that. So the way I do figures is, first of all, do the head, generally like an upside down U, and then quickly, and then shoulders. But when I've done the shoulders, I'm thinking then, is that figure, does it look as if it's coming towards me, going away from me, walking right to left, left to right? So, and the quicker you do it, um, the easier it will be. So there's a, a larger figure there, just describing the edge of them. Um, let's put a, try and connect some of these figures as well. And then we'll have um, a slightly smaller group here. I think most of these figures are either coming towards us or going away from us. Not many. There's there's not a lot down that way. I think most people are. This is a quite a um, a popular route for people to um, to walk backwards and forwards. Over on the left hand side, we just got some abstract shapes of the of the uh, ground floor of the building behind and large rectangles let's just get in a few more figures so as I say the what the ones in the back will be just almost one object There we are. If you can make that out. I'll make this line darker. I wouldn't normally do this, but just to so you can see what I'm 
on about and then a lot of this will be dark with their the main parts of their bodies and then in just a few places we can see their legs uh, I think I need a bigger figure here just to balance some of these out let's have this one walking towards us Maybe this person shopping. So I'll put in a few, a few bags. Yeah, good idea to have a few um, bags, shoulder bags, rucksacks. Some figures coming towards us. Others going away. Don't have all the figures coming towards you. Otherwise, it looks a little bit, a little bit threatening to, to anyone looking at it. Um, but certainly have a few coming towards us. So I've just done a little bit of cross hatching there with uh, my pencil just to indicate a figure that might be coming towards us. Remember the arms as well, even though it may not be too clear from my from my drawing. Um, make sure that you give an indication of some arms for these figures okay generally dark figures against a slightly lighter background so I think that that's enough figures don't want to don't want to go overboard Then uh, the road, there's this left hand, it's almost like a gutter, some sort of uh, detail. Uh, I guess where the road used to be and we'll have that one coming towards us and another one over there. And then, of course, I'm not going to draw it, but there will be, hopefully, we can create some softer reflections. This will be quite light in that area there because the light is bouncing off this building and the street level is white. So this will be fairly, that'll be fairly lighter there, but darker either side reflections from these buildings as well so that's going to be this this warm bar stone color continue it down into the shiny road surface and likewise on the left hand side a little bit down there as well and the um, softer reflections of those figures and yeah they're more noticeable with the nearer figures um, not so noticeable on the furthest ones there we go well next step for me of course is to start painting um, starting with the sky just think about my approach let me just answer this question first of all. So, question from Barb. Does cross-hatching indicate a figure is coming towards us or walking away from uh, For me, Barb, it's coming towards me. I just like doing, um, sort of paint, just drawing their, their whole face. Let me do another one. And... Uh, 
So let's do another one there. Right, another figure. All right, so if you can see this, there's the head and then a bit of cross hatching. I know it's winter, they might be might be wrapped up, but you just get an indication of that face there, like like this middle figure. I don't know whether you can just about make this guy out. So I just done a bit of cross hatching there where um where his or her face might be. And then the others. Also the others, like this one here. This one's walking away from us. So I'll do I'll do the top of the um, top of their clothing, uh, the collar, if you like, or their hood, if they're wearing a hood, um, draw that line there. So that will be, that will be um, a figure walking away from us. Okay, hopefully that answered um, your question, Bob. Right. Okay, no more questions. So let me describe my thoughts on this one. The steps I'm going to go through. First of all, as I normally do, the sky and try to get in that, that cloud there. The feeling of an overcast day, all right? Not a bright, sunny day. The blue, not too blue. Yes, the clouds are a little bit dark. Maybe it's just rained in the last hour or two, so there might be still some clouds going over. Um, it's, it's a cool sky against the warmth of the architecture. And then I will paint in the buildings. OK, so I'm going to paint the sky over the buildings, then the actual colour of the buildings themselves. Uh, I haven't drawn in the windows, but um, the, the windows are darker on the whole, so don't worry about doing any negative paint around the windows. Um, the rooftops will be done later, all right? So I'm just doing the walls of these buildings, trying to get that colour in there, trying to get the brightness here, R trying to remember not to paint over that light area and the light of the parasols. Down to the road painting over the figures not around the figures over the figures um, on the whole i might um, just paint around a few of the faces just to uh, make them stand out just a little bit more but on the whole painting over the figures and then down into the road and then while the road is wet while the road is damp i'm actually going to drop in the reflections the soft reflections so i'm going to be doing some wet in wet here to get those reflections in and the the warmth of those buildings all right so this is this whole painting phase is pretty important in laying down the foundation of the right values um, and the trying to get the effect of that of that wet surface Wish me luck. <laughs> um, where's my brush? Right. Big mop brush. Hopefully with a good point and a good edge. So just in case we need to paint around things like painting around the parasol, we've got a good edge to work with. Load up some water on that brush. And let's get in. A little bit of a a cloud, not too dark, bit of ultraing blue, bit of burnt umber, ultraing blue. You could use burnt sienna as well, um, but basically blue and a a blue and a brown just to give me that um, that sort of cloud colour. My 
paper is on a little bit of a slope. So you will see the paint slip a little bit. Let's paint the whole, whole top area with this light grey. A little bit darker now with the cloud, the underneath of the cloud. And then just lift off in a few areas. And now a little bit of sky, not too bright. I'm going to use a little bit of cerulean blue and cobalt blue. Just, oh, that's too much. We don't want a bright day. It will dry lighter, of course. A little bit of blue there. And also a little bit of blue on the distant in the distance. And then that will be a building, of course, over there. And then just leave it, let it let it do its own thing with that slope. Now for buildings. And what would you say is the colour? How would you get that colour? Well, I think a little bit of yellow ochre, a bit of burnt sienna, maybe make it a little bit grey in place to get that dirty feeling and with a little bit of a blue. But on the whole, um, yellow ochre, bit of burnt sienna would give me that, that kind of authentic um, bath. stone start over here on the left hand side now the building here is a little bit darker Just complete that one there. That building, and then it gets a little bit lighter at the bottom. I've got this Naples yellow, but just something lighter. So while that's still damp, I'm just dropping in extra colour, thicker colour. So I don't want any, any cauliflowers appearing, but just some darker colours, some blues in there just to get that kind of weathered um, look to it. Right, up the street, up 
the middle of the street and building that is facing us, this middle building, being careful to preserve that, that lighter that lighter bit on the ground and then over to the right. This one's a little bit darker at the top. So there's a little bit of that white paint, the um, Ground floor, ground floor white continues into that building, but mostly here. Over to the right and the wall of this right-hand building. And then over to this extreme right, framing, framing the, the scene here. I don't know how dry that is. Oh, it's quite dry. Um, so I can actually get in this top building here. Right, road is going to be a cooler, a cooler colour. Let's mix my bit of cobalt blue with this and basically over that top part of the scene cobalt blue And not too precise, you can see with my brush directions. But fairly at this stage, fairly even 
covering. Now we want to try and make that middle area a little bit lighter. And then the reflection of some of the buildings in just a few places, not, um, don't overdo it. This should go a little bit lighter. Continue on with the darker colour. At this stage, I need to be looking at how shiny this surface is because I want to drop in the soft reflections. So I have to work quite quickly as my paper is drying quite, quite quickly. So just drop in a little bit of distant soft reflections. This is quite dark here, up against the screen. So you can see I'm mixing my darks in that top mixing area. Now, the reflections for these nearer figures. And the paper is just, it's still slightly shiny if I look at it against the light. Now this one needs a bit more. So body, legs, feet, and reflection. I need to just lift off those those um, 
gutters or this this little trim here and I will use a medium damp a, a medium synthetic brush dampen it a little bit just squeeze out squeeze out that brush get all the moisture out of it and then the right hand one and I've got I sort of invented this one on that right hand side there we are and then leave it just let it sort of mingle around hopefully I've got the feeling of that lightness there maybe when I go in with those darker figures that will that will make the lights appear a little bit lighter all right how is it drying oh, it's drying quite well so the next step will be back to the top the rooftops let's just see if there's any questions question from Ray would you indicate the lamp now or later as part of the details so this lamp here I'm going to do that later if I draw it in now sometimes sometimes when I paint it in you can still see the pencil line and we're against a light sky so I'm going to prefer Ray to do it at the end but by all means if if you want to get it in um, first by all means by all means use um, a ruler if you if you're not good at doing straight lines um, yeah so doesn't really matter but my my own personal preference is uh, later on in my detail stage okay rooftops rooftops down a brush size or two this is a quite like this brush this is a Princeton aqua elite size 12 it's a long round it's actually got longer hairs no, it won't, sh won't show up too much but if I find another similar there we are so that's a similar sort of diameter brush a Raphael compared to a Princeton. You see how much longer the hairs are. And a good point as well. That point's going to be really good for doing that. Hopefully it'd be good for doing this um, steeple, the pointy bit of that steeple. Now, rooftops. What colour are those rooftops? A sort of, a sort of, it's very similar to the road surface. All right, that, um, that sort of, bluey gray but in places it's a little bit brown because of the weathering and lichen and you know all that sort of moss not moss lichen uh, <laughs> that uh, that will grow on the um, eventually on those tiles uh, right let's just mix a little bit more of this ultra in blue burnt sienna Let's see what that looks like. Too brown, a bit more blue. Don't, don't want to go too dark as well. It's a similar value. It's a similar value to that road. There's not much in it. I'll start from the left hand side. It's a little bit too grey. So avoid using a Payne's grey or um, 
black for this. Now the next, there's a sort of band here that looks to me slightly green. I'm going to use um, a little bit of Viridian Green in this. See if it looks all right. And then carefully get in this, this uh, band, observing my lines that I drew in. And we're just going over the edge just slightly. And then we've got the chimney or what looks like a chimney here. Don't be too fussy with the um, with the line. It doesn't matter if you leave just a little, few little specks there unpainted. Now going over to the right there's a little bit of a triangle roof there and then the I think this might be the top. This, I think this is still the top of the theatre. There's some darker bits here and here, but I'll, I'll do those later. And then it sort of slopes down to the right. There's a balustrade here. And the cornice of these, the building on the left, now, shall I do it now or later? I'll do it later, but, but there are some, there's some lines there. There's a, there's a few lines there, a few lines there, and a few lines here. Let's just concentrate on the rooftop still. Background buildings up the street. There's a sort of mixture of modern and new with some of these, some of these buildings. They're fairly, the newer buildings are fairly sympathetic. Apart from the shopping, shopping centre is quite modern, modernish, and the um, the bus station next to it is fairly modern. Now. Background building, middle building facing us. Three dormer windows. Next building to that.
Now, the tricky bit. Church steeple. I'm picking up a little bit of cobalt. I think it's slightly sort of zinky and metallic that um, the material that's used for that. So uh, something, something with a bit of a, a green um, hue to it. Right. Got to be very careful now. And let's get this point right. First of all. Left hand side. I'll do. It's a very thin little sort of spike on the top. And the top of the tower here is um, well it's a little bit darker than the sky behind and let's just darken that up a little bit and little bit darker on the top of that building next to it two sort of chimney objects on that roof oh some of these chimneys got chimney pots and they got the little the little uh, chimney pots at the top If some of your rooftops appear a little bit too dark, you can always just lift them off a little bit with a paper tissue, paper towel. Yeah, this is quite ornate around here, so you need to be very careful. Painting this rooftop. Get the, um, get the slope right.
you want to be loose with this, but sometimes it can be very difficult um, going loose with all this detailed architecture. Okay, we'll, with a, a smaller synthetic brush, we'll add in a few more details of the uh, architecture, the windows and the cornice. Um, let's do that now. So let's, uh, I'm going to a small synthetic brush now. Windows. Starting from the left. Now we're not going to, these windows are quite difficult. That you, you look at them and you see all these panes and the white frames as well. And I, I find when I, when I, um, either do negative painting or painting the, the white, maybe a bit of, with a bit of white gouache. It just makes them stand out too much. So we will do a little bit of that at the end, but I'm just going to paint in the main shapes of these windows. So let's get in um, a few upper story windows here. Just to say with a small brush and try and vary the values a little bit as well not um, have them all identical The windows below are a little bit longer. Perhaps reflecting the sky a little bit, a bit lighter as well. Almost, uh, almost grey. So we'll just do windows at this stage and then we'll do the cornices and the architectural details next. Okay, street. In the background and there's a few windows going down the street. No, middle building, three windows at the top. They're sort of lining up with those dormer windows put in earlier. And first floor windows, next building along, one. To again oh, just alter them slightly so they're not all uniform not too dark as well with these windows actually this next row down does go a good bit darker as it disappears up the uh, disappears up the street. Right, Ch this, I call it a church. I don't think this is a church. I think it's, um, it might be a, a Thai restaurant or something like that down, down below. So I don't think it's a church. There's the two windows at the top. 
Um, three windows there. Three windows there, two, two, um, below a sort of circular window, and then three, longer ones there, you can just about see a window there. Maybe another one lower down and so on. Um, ground floor over on the left hand side. Just rectangles, these dark rectangles that we can see on the other side of the parasols. Might need to go in between these windows, might need to just glaze that over with a, a little bit of the wall colour. There. Next, let's put in the uh, little the little horizontal and some vertical lines. So I'm going to use a rigger brush for this. Or shall I use a smaller? I need a brush with a good point. Yeah, let's use a rigger brush. Now load up my rigger brush with something dark. Again, not too dark. Burnt Sienna, Ultra in Blue. And get in just a few of these lines just to create more of that um, we think it's Regency style architecture. Right, I'm above the theatre now. Details to some of the chimneys. Then the rooftop. and the street I 
think about perspective. few little verticals as well. Now, got a bit of a curve of this building. And then that line there. And now a few little borders around the, the white of the, uh, I don't think it's a shop, I think it's actually closed now, whatever it was before. And continue on the right hand side. I think I need something thicker, a thicker brush. Um, it's got a good point, another synthetic brush with a good point. Those lines might be just a little bit too dark. Now coming lower down. And almost to street level now. Yeah, this is a better brush. Right hand side, top of this little extension. Think about the perspective as well. Some of these windows need to be a bit darker at the top. Definition to the underneath of the parasols. Now, the just this a little bit of that side wall that we can't see, but it's it's creating that dark, almost like a thin triangle against the light. Um, I think that's quite important to get that in. So this one here, like that, and then next one down there, and there's a darker side 
or front to that building. I'll stop in a second just to see if there's any questions. Just need to glaze in the remaining parts of these walls that I've left unpainted. It's so complicated under here. When you look at the photo, you can see planters and plants and, and uh, over, over on this right hand side, more signage maybe. There's that kiosk that we're ignoring, but we've got to think um, we need to fill in the space with, with something. So maybe the key is just to go abstract. There we go. Let's put in just a few little marks for these top windows. Yeah, this is a better brush, this one. So I can use the, do you see I've got a, quite a flat edge, so it's quite good for drawing thin lines like a rigger brush. Maybe doesn't hold as much water as a rigger brush, but I've just got a bit more control rather than the, the long hairs of that brush. That's gonna, this is going to be good for doing the block paving later on. Let's make some of the windows just a little bit darker in places. There we go. Some lines just above and below the some of the windows, like a little ledge. A bit. There are some, there's columns all over the place. few of those. This steeple, I'll just put in a few little lines for defining That uh, top there. There we go. They are a little bit too dark, these. These lines here. Right, next, the figures. We do the figures and then we've got the detail on the road to do, dark screen, 
and I'll just then use a little bit of white paint to highlight just a few of the just indicate a few of the frames and maybe just um, a little bit of the figures as well I need to put in the lamp post which is going to go here so small brush again good point to it doesn't really matter what color but you've just got to get the value right not too dark just the right amount of paint on the brush and imagining it where imagining where it's going to be says he smudging a little bit of the <laughs> of the uh, the paint there's still still quite wet right at the top of the lamp let's imagine it's going to be Rather there. There's the cone sort of top to it. A little bit of a a base. And then now if you're not confident in doing a complete continuous line, you could do a broken line, a bit of a lost and found. I'm gonna try and do a continuous line. Now I've got a bit of a guide, I guess, with the edges of the, the buildings or the edge of the paper, trying to keep it parallel to that. I suppose you could do a dotted line and then draw, then connect them up later on. But I'll, um, I'll just go for it. Perhaps this lamp post will get a little bit thicker. As I just leave a little bit of a gap, a little bit thicker as I come down. There we go. Perhaps another one. We could put another one here. Hat, base, and post okay maybe that one could be a little bit lighter than the one in front a little bit lighter uh figures let's do figures let's start off with the background figures perhaps the background figures could be not as dark as the nearer ones to us so we could get the feeling of a little bit of depth going on so mix something dark not not too dark and well um, hopefully those pencil lines will will help you um, I'm going to Try and make it up as I go along. I can I can just about see the pencil outline of my figures, but uh, doesn't matter if I go outside of those. The, the brush is important. Um, I'm trying to get a good brush. So there's a figure there. Don't be too concerned with the legs. They, they're not going to stand out as much as the...
tops of figures. nearly halfway there with the figures. So we've got our main, we've got two, we've got three main figures here. So I've just got to fill in the gaps behind them. One, two, three, and more background. Ooh, that person's fairly tall. Um, let's make them a little bit shorter. a few figures sat down in this uh, cafe on the right hand side. I think it's a cafe. nearby figures then. Let's have a little bit of flesh colour and um, so that, that figure there was coming towards towards maybe looking slightly over to the right and hands and let's have a few of the distant figures as well. Just a few of them. Coming towards us, another one there, one of our three main ones and then last one I put in 
this figure here is going to be walking away. I think we can get a little bit more adventurous with the colouring of these nearby figures. So starting from the left, um, looks like there's a figure here. Let's have this blue on that figure there. And the legs like that. Um, head hood and then the second one here shall we introduce some red A red anorak to this figure. Why not? Not too bright. I'm going to tone it down with a bit of halogen crimson. Not too much, so still keep it fairly red. Then legs, altering blue, burnt amber, bit of neutral tint. There, um, this figure here. Let's keep it fairly light, a light top to that one. And let's give this one a bit of a jacket. So dark left and right. And this figure, so we'll come back to the main one in a minute. This figure here, walking away from us. And we will put in a few bags. Let's have this one carrying a bag. This one carrying a bag as well.
said earlier, put in some A board signs. Let's put in a. There are on this right hand side, just sort of screening off the burger place, there's some screens there. Let's just add in a few little abstract. Lines. Uh, I do need to have just a bit more, oops, just a bit more reflections of these figures here. And the reflection of the anorak, just a little bit. So I'm still using the same brush for these, these, the strength in these reflections and almost dry, dry brush. A little bit of a harder line towards the, the figures themselves. There we go. Uh, main figure. Let's do another jacket. Long jacket. And then legs. Now I've got to be careful with this one because I can't see where I, I can't see where I drew the legs. Uh, get one leg right first, and then just think. Where will that will the other leg be just to give it some sort of a balance and the symmetry and you know just just making it make it look right and also some movement as well. There we go. Now I do need to get a little bit of a reflection for that one maybe the other figure I need to do this screen on the left ultra in blue neutral tint Let's have a little bit of a gap between these screens. I don't think there is one in reality, but uh, just to break up that line, maybe get a little bit lighter as we go into the distance, connect with the figures and if it looks like that screen is hovering above the ground, which mine does, we need to just um, with a damp brush, not too much water on the brush, just kind of blend it, blend it in. Maybe add in a bit of a reflection, but certainly connect it more. to 
to the ground. There we go. That's better. Perhaps there might be a sort of rail. Bag. This one was carrying a bag. Maybe this one's carrying. Two bags there. Reflections for the bags. I think just one or two of these figures could be a little bit darker just to make them stand out a bit more but still still have them connected Okay, uh, next. Are there any questions? No. Right, next. Um, let's do some lines on the ground. Back to my rigger. I think it's a good brush for this. The lines on the ground. They're not, or almost here there, they're horizontal. Do you see the ones going from side to side? They're almost horizontal, but there's a bit of a slope on from here over just a, a little bit of a slope off the horizontal a bit like that so just a few of them to indicate the uh, that structure so I'm going to get in the side of that side of that channel first and then that one there that one there and few lines on that side right I'm not going to do too many lines here because I want that to be the bright the bright area so just do a few little few lines there and then on the right hand side Some there, and also maybe just a few on that very right hand side. Now, some going the other way, not too many, but just to sort of give the feeling of that block paving. And 
and then just a few on this side. I think this building here just needs a little bit of white gouache for those. They're not shutters, but they they look like um, some, some sort of recess in the wall that's been painted a different colour. But it does give it quite a nice, looks quite attractive. So I've got a little bit of Naples yellow light here, but you could use a little bit of white gouache with yellow ochre. Give you the same thing. And so I'm just going to try it out first. It needs to be a bit whiter. And maybe just with this, make it a bit whiter. With this white gouache, I can just add in a few little white frames of the window, not too many. Get a good edge, could do this rig with a rigger, but just a few little. Just to do a few and then stand back and just see what it looks like. You don't want to, you don't want to do every frame, just hints, just get the impression of those, those, some of those frames. And then Just a few. Um, of course, only do this for nearby windows. The furthest ones, it's going to look odd. Make them, it will make them stand out a bit too much. It's a white, a whitish window there. Like that. Um, and I will now just add in a little bit of white paint for some of the supports for the parasols there and perhaps the tops of the figures just have a little bit of a just a tiny bit of a highlight some of them
there. I think I'm done. If you're inclined to, you could put you could put a few birds in the sky just to break up, just to break up that sky. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. So Bath, UK. I think a winter's day. Bright yet overcast, light behind us, wet surface of the street, loads of figures, trying to simplify the scene, trying to um, get in the trying trying to create a reflection of the architect, trying to get the, the impression of that architecture right. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.